guys, welcome back to another video. This is a motivation for young Christians. Welcome back, welcome back. Today we have Brother Javi with us to help out on the topic of finances. I have four sets of questions to ask Brother Javi. He's here to give you guys some good knowledge on finances and we're gonna get straight into this video. The first question that we have today for Brother Javi is, what does it mean to be a steward of what God has given you? So let's, let's start by looking at the basic definition of what a steward is, right? It's defined as um, someone that manages or someone that looks after. So now, if you talk about the, the biblical definition, it's essentially the same thing. However, I believe that God calls us to be not just a steward, but a good steward, right? So one that manages, one that looks after and excels at doing so. I believe that everything that we do, God calls us to do so in an excellent way, right? Now let's look at, for example, the parable of the talents in Matthew. Chapter 25. The Bible said they were three servants, right? And the master gave um, to each of them a certain amount of talent. So the first one he gave five, the second one he gave three, and then to the, the third one he gave one. And uh, after some time, uh, he came back and basically asked the servants, uh, What did you do, do with what I gave you? And now the first one, he went ahead and he doubled the original five talents that the master gave him. So now he has 10. The second one doubled the three he gave. Now he has six. But the last one, he didn't do anything with it. He said uh, he thought it's best instead of risking it or losing it, he buried it. Right? So he remains with the one. So to the first and the second servant, God, uh, the master says, um, well done. Well done, good servant. Uh, you have been faithful over a little. Now I will bless you with much more. Right? And I believe that's the, the essence of good stewardship. Right? Whatever God gives you, uh, you take care of what he gives you. You manage it well. You manage it excellent. And, and he will bless you with more. But we must first learn to be good stewards over a little before God blesses you. Amen. I do have a follow-up question. Bob Barry, do you mean a physical Barry or a spiritual Barry? When he was talking about how he buried his talent. It's right. Put it in the ground or something like it's like he put it under his mattress. Put it like think about it like that, right? You know how sometimes we say we put money under our mattress instead of putting it in the bank, right? Uh, he could have put it in the bank and it would have earned interest, right? It would have been much, but it would have been something. But instead, he put it under his mattress for fear of losing it. Just making sure, just in case if any of the viewers um, misunderstood what he meant by Perry. Question two: How important is it for a believer to have financial stability? a good question, but I'm going to give a, a generalized answer. Um, reason being, in some cases, financial stability means different things to different people, right? Everyone's situation is different. If you look, especially at this year, so many have been severely impacted financially, right? Especially those that didn't really have much in the first place. Um, their circumstances financially have it's just been tough, right? And so everyone's situation is different, right? So the general answer, um, when you just look at finances in general, or you talk to someone that works in finances or uh, a financial expert, is the ability uh, to pay your bills and still have a little bit left over, right? That's the general answer when, when we talk about financial uh, stability. But that's tough for some people. Right? Uh, everyone's financial situation may not look like my financial situation. Right? There are people that have to take care of their brothers, their sisters, their parents, right? and it's just one income. Right? There are so many people that migrated from so many different countries. Right? They don't have a, a college degree. They don't have a high school diploma. Right? And so they're working off the books, not making much money. So their financial situation is different. So for them, uh, being able to just pay the rent or put food on the table, that's enough for them. Right? Even if they don't have any to little left over, that's, that's enough for them. But here is the confidence and the assurance that a believer has, no matter what your financial situation is. Right? You can trust God, no matter what or what amount, dollar amount, is in your bank account, that his word says he will supply your needs according to his riches and glory. Right? Uh, the, the older saints often say, uh, little is much when God is in it. Right? So uh, no matter what your dollar, the dollar sign is in your, in your bank account, whatever is in your wallet, God will provide for you. So 
the general answer again is just being able to provide, pay your bills on a week to week, month to month basis and have a little bit left over. But again, um, that looks different for so many different people and it's based on their situation. I hope that makes sense. Amen, it does. Question three, how do you not let your wealth become your identity? Interesting. I think everyone loves money, right? Um, the Bible says the love of money is the root of all evil, just like that. Root of all evil, right? A, a lot of people want more money, let me put it that way. Um, whereby that is a promotion or working another job or um, hustling, whatever it is for you. Everybody wants more money, right? More money affords you to do so many more things. Um, the key word in that text, though, know, is the love of money, right? The love of is the key word in that, words in that text, right? So what we have to know first and foremost, I believe, is to know that money is a resource that is provided from the source, the source being God, right? So as easy as we get this resource, it's just as easy as we can lose it, right? So when it comes to money, you got to try not to worship it, right? Idolize it. We can't put it before God. We cannot put it before God. So putting that first place and putting God under that, that's, that's not going to work. So um, I believe it's important to know that it's just a resource and that the source remains God in the good times and the bad times, however you want to put it. But last question, what are the advice that you have when it comes to finances? I have a couple points I want to share. That's a great question. Um, the first one is uh, try to save something from every single paycheck. Um, everyone needs to have um, a rainy day fund or an emergency fund, right? Um, it's, it's never a matter if, or the question is never a matter of if it's gonna rain, right? But when, and when it does rain, it's important that you have some sort of cushion outside of your regular month week to week or month to month paycheck that will be able uh you can pull from in order you know if there's an emergency so if you have a car for example right and uh you go to the mechanic the mechanic say you need brakes right and that's i don't know let's uh for the example hypothetically speaking it's gonna cost you a thousand dollars now from your regular check after you have paid your bills put food on the table and do all that you need to do you don't have a thousand dollars left over, right? And so having that rainy day fund or that emergency fund um, is good because it gives you some cushion. Now you can pull from that savings and pay for your breaks to be done, right? Makes sense, right? I also recommend, and this is this this is that takes some time, right? This is not something that's done overnight, um, but always try to save three to six months of your expenses. And you will hear a lot of financial experts say that, a lot of you know, financial advisors say that. Um, again, so that you have that cushion. So now look at COVID, right? Um, so many people lost their job, right? So many people were laid off or furloughed. Now you have that big cushion, three to six months of your expenses saved. You have some time to potentially find you another job or hope that this thing passes over and you get your job back. Does that make sense? Right? So having that savings or having that cushion is good. What happens is a lot of people, I believe there's some report that came out, most people don't have more than $1,000 in the bank. Right? And so what happens in an emergency, because they don't have that cushion or that rainy day fund to pull from, they end up using a credit card or some other uh, type of loan, and what that does is put them in more debt, right? And it, that it just becomes a cycle, right? Because you're paying down that debt, and if you're not paying it off in a, a quick enough time, all that interest continues to add up, and so your balance, uh, you pay down some, but because of the interest, it goes back up a little bit, and it, it's a cycle, and it takes now years to pay that debt off. It makes sense? So always try to, to save at least, if you can, again, everyone's situation is different, right? So that's not realistic presently for some people. But if you can have, you save up to $500 and put that to the side or $1,000, that would be good so that you have that cushion in the event something happens, right? 
And the next thing is uh, we really need to, to spend less than we make, right? If I make $1,000 for the week, I should have spent a thousand dollars, right? We should have spent a thousand and one dollars. We have to discipline ourselves and really spend less than we make. And how do we do that? And we do that by creating the budget, right? And it can't be something that's uh, in your head that you commit to memory. I, I recommend, I'm, I'm young, but I, I love writing stuff down. That works best for me. Have a written budget, right? Write down your expenses, write down your income. Right, write down what you're going to save, write down what you're going to put to the side. Uh, make sure you take out your tithes right, and pay your offering. Right? But having a written budget helps you to become a better steward over your finances. Right? So now kind of see how that comes full circle. So we really have to spend less than we make. And for our age group, I know we struggle with something called instant gratification. Right? The moment we see something, we get it. Right? We, we don't know what it means to wait, right? That, that's tough for us, right? Designer or Jordans, whatever, something new comes up, we have to get it. No matter what the cost is, no matter how much it will put us in debt, we have to get it. The new iPhone comes out, we have to get it. We have the iPhone 11, but the 12 comes out, we have to get it. We have to stay current, right? So we struggle with something called instant gratification, the need or the want to get something right away, right? We don't know how to wait, and we really, really need to discipline ourselves. Right? especially uh, young adults and, and those graduating from high school and getting their jobs and uh, millennials in general, right, have to be much more disciplined over what God has blessed us with, right? And the last thing I want to say, um, whatever your job is, you work hard. Whether it's 40 hours a week, 20 hours a week, um, you work hard. I personally, some, some people wouldn't say this, right? But because you work hard, I believe you're allowed to treat yourself, right? Now, I'm not saying go out and buy Gucci. Right? That's not in your budget, right? But every paycheck you get, treat yourself to something, whether that's a nice dinner, whether that's a movie, uh, whether that's a new shoes, whatever it is, right? But as long as you budget your money first, always, if you can, take it. Whether, I don't know what that amount is. It's different for some people based on what you make, right? But if it's twenty dollars, right? Twenty dollars buy yourself a new shirt, right? Um, if it's fifty dollars, whatever it is, take yourself out to dinner with a friend or something. But always treat yourself. You work too hard and have nothing to show for it. And when I say show for it, I don't mean to show other people. But it's nice to 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 buy something to um. How would I put this? Uh, just appreciate yourself in a sense, if that makes sense, right? Um, you work hard, right? So have something to show for that, right? Treat yourself, right? Be good to yourself. Give yourself a break sometimes, right? But still, still do that within the means of your budget, right? Does that make sense? Right. And those were my, my three points, all right? So try to save um, a little from every paycheck, spend less than you make, and treat yourself, just make sure you stay within the budget. Amen. I agree with all those statements. Thank you so much, Brother Jave, just for coming along to be able to educate the viewers on finances. Thank you so much. If you guys have not liked this video already, hit the thumbs up. If you are new, subscribe to the channel and turn on your post notifications. So that way, anytime I upload, they will. YouTube will send you a notification. This is motivation for young Christians. I'm out. We're out. Take care, guys.